Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Vallejo Drive Church Worship Live Online. We're so happy you're joining us today via Zoom. Whether you're here in Glendale where we normally worship or you're in another city, another state, maybe another country, we welcome you on this beautiful Sabbath day. The Bible tells us that God has blessed the Sabbath day. He's blessed it. He's made it holy and he rested in it. He's filled these hours that we are all, wherever we are in the world, we're all connected through the Sabbath by God's grace. So thank you for joining us in our worship today. We have several announcements, but first I want to point your attention to our Advent candles that we've been lighting each Sabbath of this month in December. We're at our third candle right now, and this is, stands for joy. God increases our joy. God wants his children to be happy. He has provided us with five senses. And sometimes we say about others, a sixth sense of kind of instinct. But God has given us the senses to enjoy, to see the beauty around us, to smell the wonderful fragrances of the flowers, to hear the song of the birds that reminds us that he cares for each one of us, to taste the, the sweetness of, of mangoes or your favorite fruit, and to be able to, to touch and sense all the wonders of his world. So we praise God for that. He wants us to be joyful. And that's why we light our joy candle at Advent time at this time. So now we have a few announcements for us. Today, we're so excited. At 5 p.m., we're going to have our Christmas concert. We're inviting you to find a candle in your home that we're going to use and light together at the end of the program tonight when we have our special song of Silent Night. So we're inviting you to our 5 p.m. Christmas concert, Helen Quintana, the musicians, the vocalists, our production team have been working very hard to bring this to you tonight, and today is the day. So all the information I'm giving you, you can find on our website. Our link to that will be streaming tonight at 5 p.m. at graceunconditional.com. Our next announcement tomorrow is we have our church business meeting from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Again, that's gonna be through Zoom. You can find the link on our website, and we're inviting all members to join us that day tomorrow for some very special uh, discussions and very special votes that we're gonna have tomorrow. So we hope to see you there from at 10 a.m. At 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon on Sunday, our Kids Connection is having a special Christmas party and gathering on Zoom. So we're so excited that Audrey and our leaders working with our kids and the families are gonna have a fun time. I remember that they had us pastors making gingerbread houses and they voted on each one of us, and we had a great time last year, but we know that you're going to have fun on Zoom, so that's at 3 p.m. Sunday tomorrow. Monday, we are looking for volunteers. We talk about Christmas as a time of giving. We're not just talking about giving of monies or resources, but the one thing that we can all give is our time, and we're looking for volunteers to help us with our SOS food drive and our food distribution, so Monday is actually when we come together and we make our packages from 1.30 to 5 p.m. You can contact Pastor Linda if you have any more questions. But what we do is we gather together at SOS. It's just right across the street from our church. And you can come and you can make a difference by helping us unload the truck and also packing the food together. And on Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is when we actually distribute the food to the community. They come in their cars. We wear our mask. We wear gloves. We keep everything safe. The people stay in their cars, but this is a high time for us that we get to bless so many families. We have gone from just about 100 families to 120 families to 100 and almost 70 families. We have families that have come during that time when we can't, we don't have enough to give. So we are increasing our giving. We're increasing our sharing with others. So please email Pastor Linda uh, to be able to participate. We would love to have you helping Monday or Tuesday or both. So now, as we, before we move forward, Pastor Kyle has a special announcement that he'd like to make to you at this time, and he's going to also have our opening prayer. Pastor Kyle. Good morning and happy Sabbath to you. I want to spend just a few moments reminding you of our major fundraising campaign that's going on at the Vallejo Drive Church. It's called Capital Plus. You all should have received emails where you could pick your donation amount. This is not taking the place of your tithe. This is not taking the place of your offering. It's an additional sacrifice that we're all making to support our church. In the Capital Plus plan, one half of every dollar that is given goes to our church expense, 
25 cents goes to capital improvements and 25 cents goes to our um, reserves. And we really need your help. We're bouncing back like many other churches and organizations from COVID. COVID has caused these problems, but we believe that if we are faithful, God will bless us. This is our church. It belongs to each one of us. So I ask you to pray about whatever sacrificial gift you can make during the Capital One plan. Respond to the email this week so we can know exactly how to plan on your, on your commitments as we move through the rest of the year. As we open up our service, we are so happy to be with you again today on this third Sabbath, which is our live Zoom um, program. And you're gonna hear some wonderful things and see some wonderful things as the service proceeds. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for your love and your mercy. So much is going wrong in our country right now. So many people are suffering. So many people are hungry without jobs. And Lord, we first of all, lift them up in prayer that you would come close to them and that you would use our church and each of our families to do what we can to alleviate pain and suffering wherever we find it. We pray that you'll bless this service. May your name be glorified by all that is done and said. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you as we worship together.
thank you all of our music department for putting together uh, such beautiful pieces. Um, we are so grateful to have so much talent in our music department and uh, just being able to be blessed by all of you and your gifts is just so wonderful. I am very excited to open up a special time right now for praise and testimonies. I hope that after last week's um, sermon about hope, that all of you had time to kind of reflect on uh, where you're drawing hope from, where you're uh, looking for um, encouragement from God throughout your weeks, um, because that is so important, especially in times where maybe our environments or um, the states that we're in might not be providing us hope and encouragement, but that's okay because we have it all in God. And that is the most beautiful gospel that I think we have the blessing of sharing with people. So Mrs. Lowe and then um, Dr. Wang. Um, well, I want to praise the Lord because um, I had emergency surgery last week and they took out my whole right side DVS EM of my brain. And I'm at home now with a pick line and antibiotics and a wound. You have to dress everything. So but I'm thankful to be alive and God has given me hope. I mean, I don't see how other people make it without hope because I know that if nothing fails, God's with me and I have the hope that gets it back soon. So praise God. Amen, Trish. Thank you so much for sharing. And we are so happy that you are here and we get to see your smiling face. Thank you. Um, Dr. Wing. Yeah, uh, happy Sabbath to all of you. Happy uh, Sabbath. On this topic of hope, I think uh, there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel in terms of this uh, COVID situation. Uh, I just got my vaccine uh, two days ago and uh, I had some soreness of my uh, uh, left uh, shoulder, I mean, left arm, I guess, muscle for a day or so. And, and today the soreness is gone. And, uh, and so far, uh, a lot of uh, the healthcare providers, uh, nurses and doctors uh, at White Memorial uh, have had the vaccine and no, uh, no significant side effects. So that, that's, a, uh, that's bring hope to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wang, for your service as a healthcare provider and for all of you who are healthcare providers um, in our church community. We are so grateful um, for all that you do and all that you, all the time you are putting towards the community um, during our circumstance. So thank you so much for your service, Dr. Wang, and all of our um, healthcare professionals. Mrs. Joyce. Um, you are up next to share. Hi, everybody, and happy Sabbath. It's so good to see you all. We miss you terribly. But I just want to, first of all, praise God for, oh, my goodness, all so many incredible blessings in so many ways. He's blessing our home and our family and our friends and our church. And I just want to praise him because he is such an incredible God and we don't deserve any of it, but he loves us so much that he came and he died to give us eternal life and to give us another yeah. chance. So each of us are getting another chance every day that we have. Don't waste your time Amen. doing anything but being ready. Crazy. What, I, what I also want to say is that my husband and I, two of our very best friends in the world, part of the Breath of Life Quartet that my husband was in for years. Husband and wife are both in the hospital with COVID right now. They actually are in the same room together. <laughs> and we're really concerned about them. Although God is blessing and as of yesterday, they both said they were doing a little better. So I just would like you to keep them all in your, both in your prayers, their name is Clyde and Linda very dear, wonderful Christian people. And we're just praying that they'll get through this tough time. So if you would pray for them, we'd really appreciate it. And God bless you all. Thank you, Mrs. Kyle. We will definitely keep them in our prayers. 
and any other family member, friends um, that you know that are being affected by COVID, we have um, multiple avenues that we're creating as a church community to help um, any families in need um, and also just prayers over uh, anyone that's um, being affected by the virus itself. We want to um, keep you all in prayers. Um, Teresa Bergman, you're up next. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I would uh, like to ask for prayers for my daughter and her boyfriend. They've also just gotten COVID last week and a half ago, but they seem to be pretty not severe. They're at home still, so taking care of each other, but I'd appreciate if you'd pray for them. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Bergman for sharing that with us. Oh, um, the toll guards. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Happy, Happy there. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. So I'd just like to say that um, I've been working in the hospital since this has started. I haven't stopped. And every day I come home and every day I pray that I don't give COVID to my parents because clearly that would be a bad thing. So, so far, God has blessed us that I have not passed it on to them and they are still alive and well. Say hi. We survived up to this point. <laughs> yes. We don't know tomorrow. I thank you to God because my three kids <clears throat> of mine, Bianca's sister and Bianca's brothers, they are working in a hospital. So we don't harm any for that COVID-19. Thankful, I'm thankful for God because of that. Yeah, so and we have hope <clears throat> that one day everyone will then, be uh, well enough to go to church and see each other again. We miss our church oh, family. Church family. We love yeah. them. Happy Sabbath. Happy holiday. Yes. Thank love you for everything family. that you have done. Yes. So we um, are blessed and we're thankful that God has watched over us every day. And I pray that you continually pray for us and everyone else so that we don't pass on to our families and our loved ones. Oh, Thank you. Definitely. Thank you so much for coming and letting us see your beautiful faces. And thank you, Bianca, for your service in uh, where you work and putting in that time. And we are so grateful that your whole family is able to be with us today. Uh, Val. Would you like to go next? So I kind of had a scare, like a false positive test this week. <laughs> and before I found out that it was false, I just chose to trust God, even in that storm. If it was that it was in his plan for me to get COVID, then so be it, you know, and just praise him even in that storm and just saying like, you know, no matter what, it's going to be fine, but I'm going to pray that when they test again, it will show that it was negative. And when I did that, fasted, you know, everything for a whole day until I got the results, it came back that it was negative. So it shows you how to have faith in the storm and God will come through. Whether it was his will that I had it or not, I know that he would kept me because I, I didn't feel anything wrong with myself, you know? So it just shows that, you know, even in the storm, just hold on to faith because God's still with us. And that's ultimately what matters. We can't let the fear of something out there take hold of us and lose faith. I think that's a big um, testimony in that. But also I was looking for a job that I could do four days a week online, fully remote, so I wouldn't have to go into the office because my job currently was trying to force me to go in while cases are going really high. Um, and I was just praying about that. A job was uh, reached out to me the same day. Um, they got me an interview the same day. And the same day they told me they would accept me, even though they wanted someone for five days, they would accept me for four. So God is good. And even in the storm, when it seems like something horrible happens, he always opens another door. Thank you so much, Val, for sharing your testimony and for being here and willing to share it with our church family. It is encouraging to hear all of our journeys and how we're uh, growing with God during this time as we're using his encouragement and his hope. Um, and 
Friends, I, I just want to encourage all of you to check in on your church family, check in on your neighbors. Um, we have uh, people with family members that we get messages um, about people being in the hospital and, um, just how they're being affected by COVID and some are, some are okay and some are not okay. So please check in. Um, this is our, this is the blessing that we have to be part of a church family, to reach out and check in on all of our community members and their family members. Um, cause each person represents a whole family. So you might be looking at one face right now in this zoom, but they have a whole family behind them, um, who are all going through different things. Um, so just, we want to encourage all of you to reach out, um, and just have prayers for, um, anyone that you might know of anyone that you might be thinking of. If you're thinking of them, reach out to them, send them a text. If they come to your mind, just send them a text, send them an email, give them a call. Um, those, those in it of itself are so meaningful and so valuable. I want to thank everyone who shared. Um, I don't see any other hands from what I can see. Um, we have a message um, from the Castro family. Keep them in their prayers um, as they have family members who are, who have COVID and are um, going through uh, the process of uh, healing from it right now. So please pray for the Castro family and so many of their families that we get um, notifications about throughout the week. So check up on them. Um, and I want to take this time now to pass it on to Dr. Kyle. Thanks so much. I hope you were paying attention to those testimonies because they were real. They were from the heart and they're from my, our members, our church family praising God and also asking for the intervention of the church in prayer. Intercessory prayer is so important to the life of the, of the body of believers. We come together that we might pray for one another. I believe in the power of prayer. And the Bible says in Jesus' words, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in your midst. Well, there are more than two or three of us on this call. We may be separated by distance, but we are together in spirit and together as a family. So as we open up this time for prayer, we want to remember uh, the Bergman family. We want to remember other families that have been mentioned, Clyde and Linda, our friends, others who are fighting COVID, others who are fighting unemployment, some who are rejoicing that they have employment. But more than, more than that, we ought to pray for just the spirit of, of God to be in every life and every member of our church. We need the Holy Spirit's power. Where there is little prayer, there is little power. Where there is much prayer, prayer, there's great power. So we're going to do something a little different this Sabbath. We're going to ask for two volunteers who will pray. Uh, and then I will close this, that prayer session. So it'll be a total of three prayers that we'll have this morning. Um, I can't see any hands, so I'm going to ask our those who are watching for me to just type the name in the chat box if anybody who volunteers or you can put your own name in the chat box if you'd like to be one of those uh, two prayers that comes from our congregation this morning. I, I want you to know it's, it's such a privilege for us to talk to God, that we have a God indeed that we can talk to, not just talk to, but he listens to our prayers. Even before the words have left our lips, angels are already dispatched to bring us answers. Um, it's, it's quite a privilege. And so Hebrews tells us that we ought to come boldly before the throne of grace. So I'm going to ask someone to step up boldly and be one of those two volunteers that will pray for us this morning. Any hands? Any takers? Well, I tell you what, we'll start off with Annette. If someone wants to volunteer, we'll leave time. It looks like Matt. So we'll have Annette and Matt. Annette, why don't you start? Matt, you'll follow, then I'll close. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of your Son. That is what we should rejoice and think about before we start our day and at the end of our days. We are so grateful, dear Lord, that amongst all the problems that are going on in the world, 
that we have hope, mm -hmm. not only to um, power through this current situation, but the hope and the understanding that all of this is only temporal, that our hope is grounded in who you are, who you said you are, and who you have uh, demonstrated by the actions of your love throughout centuries to all your people. Thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of accepting our humanity and putting that on yourself and trading that so that we could stand righteous before you. When we think about that, really, really think about that, our human minds might not be able to comprehend it completely. So help us by filling us with the Holy Spirit so that as we understand that gift, it'll change us. It'll make us want so much to be like you that we will shed our pettiness, that we will focus on the things that really matter, which is loving our, our neighbors, our families, our church, so that we can hasten your soon coming. Dear Lord, we ask for your forgiveness of our, of our sins, where we have been less than kind to each other, where we have not um, demonstrated your character Please help us, dear Lord, so that as we look to you, as we spend more time in your word, that we will be changed. We ask, dear Lord, to please forgive us for our shortcomings. At this wonderful season, we are so grateful that our church has been able to continue ministering to us as members mm -hmm. and also ministering to people outside of our church walls. I thank you for the leadership of our church leaders, our pastors, and I ask for a special blessing um, as we close the year and as we move into the new year over them that their leading will only be led by you. Dear Lord, we have many needs in our congregation and also in our extended families. We pray for um, giving us the opportunity to help those in need. We thank you for uh, those that are able to continue to work, that we will use those resources to help others. We ask your Lord for your healing upon um, the Bergman family, uh, for Teresa and Clyde, for um, any of the others that have mentioned illness. I ask your Lord for a special blessing on all of us that are healthcare workers. This is an incredible, hard, difficult, tiring time for all of us. The hours that we have been putting in to keep people safe are wearing on us. And I ask that you will give us strength to continue this and come over on the other side of COVID. Dear Lord, I ask that you will bless our time together that you will uh, let us enjoy the gift of your word, the gift of music, and that when we are done with our service, that we will be refreshed and renewed in the hope that you have provided for us. Amen. All these things we ask in that holy name. Amen. 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 Dear Father in heaven, God, um, I just want to thank you so much for another Sabbath day. I thank you for the opportunity to just rest after um, a busy, busy week for, for many of us, God. Um, I ask that we'll all be able to get that special blessing that you have for each and every one of us uh, this morning and the rest of the day, God. Um, I wanna also thank you just for technology that we can still gather together. Um, as it's been a very strange year, God, We uh, things we've taken for granted, um, being able to even meet together, uh, despite of these strange uh, circumstances, Lord, we thank you that we can still be together and see each other and, and worship you. God, right now, I just want to lift up uh, every person on the Zoom call, uh, every family, um, every person a part of our church and our community in general, Lord, um, 
we've been able to hear many testimonies um, as well as uh, many prayer requests, praises. Um, this, this is a lot for, being in this world is, is a lot for us to handle on our own. And so we wanna give each and every one of our burdens and cares to you. You've said that um, we can cast them um, upon you because you care so much about us and because you can care and take care of all of our many burdens and concerns. You know what keeps us up late at night worrying, you know, the things that stress us out. Um, there's nothing we wanna hold back to ourselves. We wanna give it all to you right now. Um, and also thank you for, for how we've seen you continually working in the lives of uh, so many of us. Um, you've blessed us in so many ways. Um, and we wanna make sure that we, we praise you and thank you for all of those many blessings that we see as well as those that we don't even know about because we know that uh, there are so many things that you're constantly doing in us, through us, and for us that we're not even aware of, God. But we thank you um, for continually showing up. And um, most importantly, God, uh, in this season and, and in general, God, we want to thank you for just coming here. Um, you are the best gift that we have ever received, the best gift we will ever receive. And God, we wanna make sure that through all the, the busyness and craziness of uh, this Christmas season, Lord, that we were able to still remember um, that it's all about you, God. And we thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you for still remembering us and um, loving us despite of us being sinners, despite of us not um, always doing what you called us to do. Uh, we thank you for not giving up on us. And we thank you for coming here and going through so much and dying for us and redeeming us. And um, we look forward to you coming again soon, God. And uh, in the meantime, help us to be able to stay focused on you and as a church to be able to live out the mission that you have for us each and every week um, going forward. We, we pray for uh, the leadership of our church, for the pastors and the elders, for all the ministries. Um, and we just thank you and we're excited to be a part of your body and to glorify you and to do your will. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, amen. Father, we call upon your name now, recognizing how good you have been to us. You have heard the prayer requests. You've heard the issues that have been brought up into everyone's in minds and in their words. We lift up the Bergman family. We lift up other families that are struggling with disease, struggling with unemployment, but more so the mental health of our church the depression, the isolation, the loneliness. We, we hold up Dee, Dee Neff, and in her grief that she's going through right now, we, we also want to remember um, Dr. Barton's husband who is in the hospital at this time. And there's so many others, Lord, that are wrestling with problems and issues. But we're grateful that we serve a good God, a God who is strong and powerful, and so we pray for that power, that healing, and that restoration come into our lives today. As we look forward at the end of this week to celebrating Christmas, it won't be like any normal Christmas. We'll be separated from our families and loved ones. But Lord, I pray that our congregation will be mindful of public health guidelines that will stay safe and that we would be able to move through this holiday season looking forward to the next holiday season when hopefully we will all be back together again. We pray for Pastor Bishwash as she gives her message today that you would speak to our hearts through her words and we lift your name up in glory. In the strong name of Jesus we pray, amen. Thank you so much for your prayers and now we'll move into our message of the morning from um, Pastor Bishwash and Cast that are joining her.
Christmas means to me love and hope. Merry Christmas! What Christmas means to me is friends and family gathering together to celebrate the nativity and what it means to us. Christmas means to me remembering the, remembering the birth of Jesus. I, I, Christmas means to me what means to me is is is, is gift, presents, and Jesus. Christmas means that my family and cousins get together, and we can eat food and open presents together, and we all have a lot of fun. Christmas means to me having fun and opening presents, giving presents to others, celebrating Jesus' birth. Merry Christmas. What Christmas means to me is about Jesus and giving. What Christmas means to me is the family gathering together to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Christmas means to me um, spending time with your family. What Christmas means to me is love. Christmas means to me that baby Jesus was born. Merry Christmas! Good morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. This month, we've been on the theme of giving Christmas. And today, the Sabbath before Christmas. We're just six days away. That's exactly what we're talking about. The day God gave himself to us. The name Christmas comes from the words Mass of Christ. A Mass is a church service, just like we're doing today. When people gather together and remember that Jesus died for us and then came back to life. So this is where we get the name Christ Mess, shortened to Christmas. What does Christmas 2020 look like for us? What does it look like for you? Are some of you having Christmas over Zoom with family? Did you mail cards to anyone? Are you hoping that Amazon box that you sent out actually makes it in time for next week? With the hustle and bustle. I know that this COVID Christmas will be one that will not be soon forgotten. There are so many things that we don't know about this holiday season, yet there is one really, really important thing that we do know. Christ gave himself to us. He was born so that he could live with us and teach us and guide us and eventually die for us so that we one day could go home to live with him forever. This was the plan. This was always the plan of salvation. This gift to us. This gift of a relationship with God forever. So getting ready for church this week, I couldn't help but think of the birth story in the Bible. My favorite is the one found in Luke chapter two. You know the one the story where the shepherds were out in the fields taking care of their sheep by night. I've always wondered about the shepherds. Shepherds, stinky, dirty, sometimes uneducated shepherds. That's who all of heaven decided to announce this amazing moment to? Not the priests who were in charge of the local churches or synagogues, not the rulers or the mayors who led out and governed the city. No, God decided that it would be the young teenage shepherds out on a hillside who were tending their sheep that he would first announce this birth to. Before we begin, I also have to share a testimony with you. Our sermon time today was supposed to be a live Christmas skit with our young adults and interactive moments with you, our church family, on Zoom. We practiced 
four hours in order to do this live with you. Yet around 8 p.m. last night, we found out that it would not be possible. So the team regrouped. They pulled their energy, they got out of bed, they got dressed, put their faces on, we edited our parts and did our best to film this skit with everyone alone in their homes. I'm so, so proud of them and the resilience to get this story to you today. It's after midnight, it's after one, and I can't go without stopping to also give thanks to Audrey, who was also still here at the church, editing all of the videos and voices together so that we could have something for you today. Though we could not present this as hoped, we know that the Holy Spirit can carry this through. Thank you, church family, for your energy, your imagination, and for being a part of our suddenly taped skit on Luke chapter 2. May you be in awe and wonder with us as we hear about this story of God with us. So, a little historical overview. The ruling times of the Jews when kings reigned over Israel was over. No more Saul, no more David, no more wise Solomons. They were taken into captivity. The people of Israel were defeated by the Babylonians and then the Persians and then the Greeks and the Seleucids and eventually by the Romans. So it has been a long, long time since the Jewish people had been free. Over 600 years since they were able to worship God freely. Over 1,300 years since the Ten Commandments had been given to Moses. Hundreds and hundreds of years of people telling them that there had been this guy named David who slayed the enemy Goliath. So you get it. It's very similar to you and me today. It's been thousands of years since these things had actually taken place. Things are rough for the people during that time. Kind of like they're rough for us today. And then this, this unimaginable thing happened. But I'm asking you, let's put on our thinking caps and envision this in our minds together. This is the story of the birth of Jesus from the view of the shepherds. It says in Luke chapter 2, verse 8, in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Oh, so there are shepherds in this story. I want us all to visualize this. So let's meet some of our shepherds. Oh, there are some. Hmm, they look oh, oh, and smell alike. Let's give them some names so we can tell them apart. First up, there's Amati. His name means my truth in Hebrew. The voice of truth. Which is fitting because he wanted to become a lawyer, but didn't make it in school. I object. Sorry. It's okay though, because you're doing something super important. You became a shepherd instead. Amati really believes in taking care of his sheep. He's a law-abiding citizen and wants to make sure that everything is okay. Can everyone at home stay muted but wave and say hi, Amati, with me? Hi. Hi, hi Amati. Everybody. Next up is Amna. Hi. He chose to become a shepherd because of the powerful stories of King David and other great shepherds and kings from the Old Testament. Like Solomon. He's a faithful follower of our Lord and anxious for his return. Come, Jesus, come. Which is so perfect that his mom named him Amnam because that word means faithful. Can everyone stay muted? But wave so he can see you and say hi, Amnon. Hi. Hi, Amnon. Hi, Amnon. Third, we have Ruella. Her name means friend of God. I am a friend of God. 
and Ruella studies the old scriptures to keep learning new things about him. She would have studied to become a student under a rabbi, which means a great teacher. But her family has been in the shepherd business for generations. A long, long time. She really does love sheep. Aww. And as the youngest, the responsibility now falls on her to take care of her family's financial investments. Bills. So she knows there's more info out there about being a better shepherd. So she's always studying. Can everyone stay muted? But wave really big so Ruella can see that you're saying hi. Everyone say hi, Ruella. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi Ruella. Ruella. And hi. finally, we have Omri. Oh, hey, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. That means happy Sabbath. Omri's actually a theology major, which means she's a student who studies the Bible. But she does the shepherd thing during the summer. She finds it's a great way to meet other people and share the story of God, his love for us. Oh, how he loves you and me. And his creation during the primordial advent. That means when God walked with them, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. Oh, and her name means servant of God, which is just what she wants to be. Someone who helps others and tells them about God. He's coming, y'all. Oh, let me tweet that. Can everyone say hi, Omri, with me? Hi, Omri. Hi, Omri. Okay, those are some of our shepherds. As the Bible verse said, our shepherds. We're the shepherds. We're out in the fields. We're in the fields. Watching their sheep. Hey, watch out for that sheep. At night. Man, it's so dark. Let's see what happens next in the story. They were watching over their sheep at night. Whoa! Whoa? What whoa? What happens next? Should we tell someone about that? Oh, my bad. This is incredible. You're not going to believe what happens next. So let me just read it out loud. And bam! Then the angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord, stood before them. Where he at? And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Ah! But the angel of the Lord said to them, It speaks? Shh. No, no demon. demon. So drag drag with Jesus. Jesus. De boa alegria para todo o povo. What did he say? I don't know. Hang on. Let's listen to him with Google Translate. Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news. Good news? Of great joy. Hallelujah. For all the people. Preach it. Ooh, I've got to tweet that. Guys, let him finish. To you is born this day in the city of David, Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child. Yeah? Wrapped in bands of cloth, as is the custom, and lying in a manger. Yeah, that's norm. No, no, that's definitely not normal. Amati realized that this was the fulfillment of prophecy and what the scriptures had said. It's what the scripture had said. Verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among men guys guys don't worry it's just the angels singing they're so excited listen lady have you ever seen an angel pop out of the sky and start singing i've gotta tweet this no no you're right that would be terrifying. Well, 
Let me keep reading and we can see what happens next. Verse 15 says, When the angels had left them Bye. and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. Yes, that's exactly what we need to do. Let's go find him, said Amati. Let's go! Do you understand what that means, said Amnon? Do you understand? Freedom from tyranny. Which is a fancy way of saying no more mean behavior from the government, said Ruella. No more tyranny. It means he's here, said Omri. He's here! Verse 16, so they went with haste, which means they hurried. So the shepherds, Amati, that's me, Amnon, that's me, Ruella, present, and Omri. Omri! Hey, Omri! Oh, sorry. Just tweeting about our road trip. All headed to the city of David. <laughs> we do not know how long the journey took, what with the possibly thousands of sheep in their care. But let's imagine they took them with them. Because, as we read in our story last week, a good, good shepherd protects their sheep, teaches them, makes them well, and gives them what they need. So we can only imagine that the shepherds traveled with their thousands of sheep to go find the baby. Can you picture it in your mind? The sound that they must have been making and the sight that they must have been. The ruckus with all the baaing as they crossed the plains to the city. But at last, after watering and feeding them, chasing after those that got lost and taking very little time to nap, they finally arrived at their destination. Well... Here we are, in the city of David. Yay. So as you can see, IG Live, we're here in the city of David, looking for a baby dressed in BCE4 swaddling clothes. Hey guys, a look over there. Verse 16, and the shepherds found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. Hi, Hi baby. baby. They all whispered as they tripped over each other to the stone manger. Wow, it's true what the scripture had said, said Amati in awe. It's true. Freedom, said Amnon. Freedom. Hope, said Ruella. Hope. He's here. God is actually here with us, said Omri. He's actually here, y'all. Verse 17 said, When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. This means that with animated faces and motions, they began retelling to Mary and Joseph about all the crazy, wonderful things they had experienced that night. There we were, watching over our flocks by night. And then bang, there was an angel. And everyone was like, ah! And there was singing, glory to God. And they said we'd find you here with a baby. In swaddling clothes. Laying in a stone manger. And here you are. Verse 18 says, And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. After they all made the rounds, cooing and awing over the baby, who would be their salvation, the shepherds noticed what time it was. Verse 20 says, the shepherds returned to the fields. Let's go back, guys. Glorifying God. Wow, what a night. To God be the glory. And praising God. To God be the praise for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Oh, I have to tweet all of this. And tweet, she did. Wow, what a night for the shepherds. 
Can you imagine standing outside looking at Christmas lights here in Glendale or Pasadena when BAM! The whole night sky fills with brightness and then becomes a musical? Don't be scared, said these foreign beings. I have good news. They said singing. It's for everyone. No class distinction. No amount of money made any difference. And the angels gave them a checklist of exactly what they should be looking for. Baby, check. Wrapped in swaddling clothes, check, check. Laying in a manger, <laughs> As the angels left, they sang glory to God in the highest peace on earth to everyone. <sighs> what? What an incredible story. What an incredible thing that actually happened. When the shepherds encountered this good news, they too did not just go back to their work. They too left giving glory to God and praising him. That's what happens when you encounter the Spirit of God. You're changed. The shepherds, they were still shepherds, but now on a mission. They were spreading the word about what they had been told and seen. Can you imagine this with me? These teenagers were now going through the city telling everyone they saw about what had happened. They were the original pathfinders leading the way to Christ. Can you imagine what the town may have said about them as they talked of angels and light and singing happening in the middle of the night? Babies in a stone manger, it's kind of crazy sounding. What did the people say to them? What would people say to you and me if we shared the good news of God with them? Are we sharing? I think it's so important that this story, this social media buzz, this marketing campaign surrounding the greatest birth on earth was led by a group of young shepherd tending teens. The Godhead did not choose the wisest persons in town to tell. They did not choose the most religious to be the ones to receive this news first. They did not choose the strongest. They chose teenagers in the field, watching over their sheep by night. This is a reminder for us today. God doesn't need us to be the wisest. God does not need us to be the most religious. He's not asking you to be the richest or the strongest or the most educated. He's just asking for you to share him. To share this miraculous story, it's on this Christmas Sabbath that we share this story with you, our family, so that you may have a new way of giving Christmas to others around you this week. Let us remember that he really is the reason for this season. May we spend this week giving Christmas to those we meet.
I trust that you've enjoyed your day with us today in, in worship. We've enjoyed being with you. We wish we could see you in person, but that day is coming sooner than you may think. I want to remind you before we have our closing prayer about our Christmas concert tonight on our website, five o'clock. I know you'll enjoy it. Business meeting tomorrow and our children's party, children's Christmas party tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Let God, his love shine upon your lives as the angels shone upon the shepherds. So Christ desires to shine into our hearts and to our families and to warm us and bring us closer together. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time we've had together in worship, for this talent that we've seen demonstrated in our church, for those young people who helped us with the delivery of that message and the choir and all of the beautiful music they have sung today. But more importantly, thank you, Lord, for the testimonies of your grace and your mercy and for hearing our prayers. Go with us through the rest of this week. We offer our lives to you as living sacrifices. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Why don't you unmute your mics at this time and greet one another. This is what we call our parking lot time, where you can kind of say one, hello to one another as if you were leaving church, going back to your homes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good to see everyone. I miss you guys. Hi, Camden. Hi. Thank you. I want to thank you. I miss you, Grandpa. Hi, Alice and your birdies. Alice. <laughs> Alice. 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 We love you yeah, all. Oh, yeah. oh, I see puppy Rosie. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> Preachers here. Hi, RC. Hi, Grandma. Grandpa. <laughs> Uh, hi, Pastor Mark. Hi, Lorraine. Hello. Oh, hi, Stan. Hi, Helen. Hi, Hello. Hi, Helen. 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 Hi, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let's stay connected, everyone. Let us know if you guys need anything. Okay, we are here at the church. Just give us a call. Send us an email. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah.